Hey, what's up everybody? Hammerheart Metal Reviews here. Today I'm going to be running through all of Iron Maiden's discography from my least favorite to my favorite. Fuck, they have a lot of albums. 16. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. Not really any bad albums in this mix, but definitely some that are better than others. So anyways, I'm just going to get right into it. Start at number 16, count it all the way down to number 1. My least favorite album... Virtual XI. I'm sorry, I just have never been able to get into Blaze's vocals, as you'll see from my next pick as well. These two albums are ranked last and second last. It's not that there's nothing good about these albums. I mean, Virtual XI, Virtual 9, whatever you're, 11, whatever. <laughs> Virtual 11, I'm an idiot. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Clansman, really cool song. But beyond that, I just don't go back to this album too much. I just can't get into his vocals. I'll just go right into number 15. Same thing, X Factor. Maybe slightly better than Virtual 11, but not the best. Uh, what can I really say about this one? Sign of the Cross is a cool song. But beyond that, once again, I just don't go back to the Blaze albums very much at all. So now into the good stuff. From here on out, like, I love all these albums. It's not really any bad ones in the mix. But here's my rankings. It's number 14, No Prayer for the Dying. I know a lot of people shit on this album, don't really like it too much. I still think it's pretty good. Yeah, maybe not based on my ranking. It's 14th out of 16. But that's just because Iron Maiden fucking rule and all their albums are awesome. This album has some killer songs. I mean, the title track, Mother Russia... You can't go wrong. I still listen to this album all the time. It's fucking great. Number 13. Uh, kind of newer one, although it's still old at this point. It is 2021. But uh, Dance of Death. Hey, that's my puppy. So be quiet there, buddy. Just hold on. Uh, the next one, number 13. Uh, Dance of Death. This is a pretty good album. Um... Right after uh, Brave New World was kind of their big comeback album. And then this one just fell a little bit short of that one, I think. But it's still pretty fucking good. Some really good songs. You got, like, Passchendaele. Title track, Dance of Death is really fucking cool. No More Lies. Rainmaker. Journeyman. Like, it's a good fucking album. I just like some other ones better. Number 12, Final Frontier. Kind of similar to Dance of Death in, in quality. I still really like this album. I listen to it all the time, actually. There's some great fucking songs, especially like the tail end of this album. Oh, so killer. Starblind, Talisman, Where the Wild Wind Blows, I think that's what it's called. Ah, just great fucking songs on here. But yeah, there's just other albums I still like more. Number 11, Fear of the Dark. I mean, what can you say about Fear of the Dark? That title track is amazing. That's one of their fucking most famous songs. It is just absolutely killer. A lot of people don't like this album as a whole, though, but I do. There's some fucking killer songs on here. You got Childhood's End? Fuck, that's a good one. Um, what the fuck else is the... Uh, Afraid to Shoot Strangers. Oh my god, I fucking love that song. Super underrated track. Fear of the Dark is a pretty fucking good album. Number 10, most recent, Book of Souls. Double album, long as fuck. But it is good. Very proggy. I like a lot of the stuff on this album. Closer, Empire of the Clouds, like holy fucking shit. I think that's the longest song they've ever done. It is amazing. So fucking good. Um, other great songs, The Red and the Black is really fucking good too. There are a couple songs that I feel like they could have trimmed off this album. But overall, it's fucking still really good. I still listen to it all the time. Number nine, A Matter of Life and Death. Really good album as well. This is in their later stage of their career. A little more proggy. It's a pretty long album as well. Um, once again, they really end off these albums really fucking strong. The last three tracks on here, For the Greater Good of God, Lord of Light, and The Legacy. That's an epic way to end the album with that trio of tracks. The rest of the album is pretty fucking killer too. It's a great album. I still listen to it all the time. Number eight, going a little old school now. I got Killers here. A lot of people might shit on me for having it so low. But I mean, it's number eight. All made is amazing. So it's fucking hard to do this ranking. 
Killers is number eight. I mean, what can you say? Title track is fucking amazing. Paul Diano still sounds great on here. This was his last album before Bruce came in on... Fuck, I love this. I love this album. I couldn't put it higher because I just love the other albums more. Number seven, Number of the Beast. I mean, this is the classic Iron Maiden album. I still like some other ones better, but holy shit, this is just epic. I mean, you got the classics, Run to the Hills, Number of the Beast. One of my top two or three favorite Maiden songs, Hallowed Be Thy Name, to close it off. Holy fuck. I mean, you're not going to get much better than that. Uh, there's maybe one closing track on a different album that is better than this, but it's probably my number two main song of all time behind one other one, which I'll talk about later. Number six, the comeback album, Brave New World. It's tough to put that ahead of Number of the Beast, but I mean, fuck. Once Bruce was out of the band, it was kind of a letdown. I didn't know where Maiden was going. Then you hear he's coming back, and holy fuck, did that album kick it all up. Like, just fucking kicked ass knocks it out of the park starts off with wicker man you're like holy shit ghost of navigator title track dream of fucking mirrors oh man great fucking album didn't quite make the top five but number six is pretty fucking decent too now into the top five this is like the the next five albums are all 10 out of 10s i don't fucking care they're all amazing any of these could be your number one and i'd be like yeah that's fucking good choice these are all good fucking albums so number five for me, Somewhere in Time. I mean, what can you say? This album is great. Opens up, caught Somewhere in Time, right into Wasted Years. Jesus Christ, those are fucking good. Uh, Loneliness and Long Distance Runner, super underrated fucking track. I mean, that is just killer, killer shit. And to end off with Alexander the Great, I mean, come on. This is just a good fucking album. 10 out of 10, fucking masterpiece. But that being said... I still got four albums ahead of it. <laughs> Album number four for me, Peace of Mind. Pfft. Another one that just knocks it right out of the fucking park. I mean, what can you say? It's got the Trooper on there. That's absolutely killer. One of their most famous songs ever. Uh, fucking Die With Your Boots On. Revelations, absolutely fucking killer song. Oh man, Flight of Icarus. What can I say about this album that hasn't already been said? It is absolutely amazing. And it's coming in at number four. Only three more. What's it going to be? You can kind of start to figure it out, but let's see. Coming in at number three, the debut. Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden. I fucking love this album. Yes, I like Bruce Dickinson's vocals more than Paul Diano's, but on this album, Paul Diano just suits it. Bruce Dickinson wouldn't have suited this music as much. And this is a great fucking album. Phantom of the Opera, Prowler, fucking Strange World. Title track, Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden. They close, like, every concert ever with that. Just the best fucking debut. Like, you can't get better than that. It's so fucking good. Ah, but I guess you can't get better because I still got two more. Which one's it gonna be? What's number two? What's number one? Coming in at number two, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. So close to putting this number one. I mean, like, that fucking poster right there. Great fucking album. On any given day, this could be my number one, but right now, it's my number two. I love this album front to back. Every fucking song on here is absolutely killer. You start off with fucking Moonchild, all the way through, like, fuck these songs. So good. The title track is another one of my favorite songs. De easily in the top five. Seven Son of a Seven Son. So good. The Clairvoyant is fucking cool. Um, the Evil That Men Do. Uh, fucking... Why am I just struggling with all these <laughs> things right now? Can I play with madness? How can I forget that? Great fucking song. Oh, man. Just such a good album. That only leaves one, which if you know Iron Maiden and you know which album I haven't named yet, you know what it is. But without further ado, fucking Power Slave. Number one, my favorite Maiden album of all time. Another one front to back, just killer. There is no filler in this at all. Every fucking song belongs there, and it is all fucking good. This one opens with Aces High. Oh, that riff, so fucking good. Two Minutes to Midnight. Oh, so many good songs on this album. But I was talking earlier about what's my favorite Maiden song and what's my favorite al album closer. This is the one, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Fuck. 
epic as hell. I saw them play this live, well, I don't know, 10 years ago on the uh, Somewhere Back in Time tour. Holy fuck, this was so good. I could not believe they were playing it live. I almost cried. It was so fucking good. Just classic, classic album. What more can I say? Iron Man's one of my favorite bands of all time. That was my ranking. My opinion doesn't mean any more than yours. But maybe it does. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> Anyways, let me know below if you agree with this, what you think, whatever. Throw me your fucking recommendations, what you think is the best, what you think is the worst. Am I way off base here? Just let me know what you thought of this video. Anyway, fucking A. Horns up. Hammerheart Reviews out.